I'm in Aberystwyth um, by the sea. This is the castle. Uh, I want to talk to you about the latest developments at Fukushima. The evidence that's coming out at Fukushima now is that there's an enormous amount of radioactivity spread over a very large area. And my advice has always been that you should evacuate these areas, you should get out. Because although the dose rates, the actual microsieverts per hour, are not very high, and don't amount to very much as a dose over a year, the problem is that the, the higher dose rates signal higher contamination, and this is contamination by a large number of materials which get inside the body and cause really quite serious health effects, particularly in children. And I'm talking about cesium-137, which gets into heart muscle. I'm talking about strontium-90, which isn't measured, incidentally. Hardly any measurements of strontium-90 have been made. And we're talking about plutonium and uranium, substances which bind to DNA. Now, if you can't get out, if it's not possible to get out, and there's no evacuation, then there is something, still something that you can do. And I think I mentioned this before. And it has to do with the chemistry of these substances and how they have particular affinity for the target for radiation-induced effects, which is the DNA. So inside every cell you have chromosomes and they control what the cell does. And the material that they are made up of is DNA. And DNA has a certain amount of affinity for certain radionuclides, particularly strontium-90, uranium, and plutonium. Now, just as you give iodine in order to block the access of radioactive iodine to the thyroid gland, in fact, it's quite reasonable in terms of physical chemistry, um, standard physical chemistry, nothing peculiar, to give high doses of calcium and magnesium, which would effectively block the access of plutonium and strontium and uranium to the DNA. Now these substances are really quite harmless, so you can take significant quantities of calcium and magnesium without any effect at all. You can take a, a, a tablet containing about 800 milligrams of calcium, 350 milligrams of magnesium every day for an adult, and then a proportionate amount for a child. So for a child of 10, by weight, about half of that. So you want 400 milligrams of calcium and uh, about 175 milligrams of magnesium. Now these tablets are being made now, following my suggestion, by a number of companies in Japan and in the United States. And they're being sold on the internet. And this is a good thing generally. But actually you can buy these tablets quite cheaply calcium and magnesium tablets in any one of the health food shops that they have nowadays. I mean, in every country of the world you can, you can buy calcium and magnesium supplement tablets. And so my advice is, that, is for you to go out there and to buy these tablets and so that you take one a day because this will effectively reduce the concentration on the DNA of these dangerous radionuclides. If you can't get out, that is. So that's, that's my message for today. I'm very glad to see that some companies are selling these tablets and if you want to buy from these companies, well that's fine. I mean they're available on the internet, but you can also buy them from the health food shops very cheaply and they are exactly the same substances. So that's my advice to you. Thank you very much.